Okay, now we're on to the halfway point in terms of DK's treetop temple before we move on to the second board and join at some point in next weekend. You know, just like the usual, so... Ah, oh, great. It looks like that blooper might be able to actually strike against me again. Or, potentially, that he did this way too late, so as a result, he instead aim it straight into Bodo, so I'm fine with that. So there goes her half of her coins, to be more specifically 12 coins in fact, so yeah that seems totally fine for me. So anyways, so let's see what number he gets, he gets a miserable one, but he will buy something in the shop, so... Oh yeah, I should probably point things out as well, is the fact that the... Sometimes that uh, computer players can sometimes either go in the shop, or most of the time just ignore it completely, with uh, there was actually like... Well, it's kind of hard to say, honestly, but either way, let's go ahead and use uh, Witchy uh, Candy, which, if you're most able to use that candy, by the way, um, you become three duplicates of yourselves while in small form, by the way, and what you do with it is the fact that you can able to steal someone else's candy. So because of that, though, that was actually a pretty uh, useful uh, candy to use. It's especially noticeable that if you really want to steal someone else's items, like, for instance, that... Um... Ah... Uh, um... I don't know. Um... I was literally off by one space, if you couldn't tell already. So, I'm just gonna ignore that for now. And then just try to able to continue things on there. Although, the only thing it's worth noting for, as you can see on screen, that usually I'm still using my item at the moment. So as you can tell, that we can't enter shops while using the item. So because of that though, unlike in, uh, well, unlike the past games for sure, that if you manage to use the items, then you can still technically go in the shops. Whilst new forms have been here though, you'll be ignoring the shops completely if you manage to transform into something. You know, it's kind of similar to new forms of the Mega Mushroom um, item from the likes of Mario Party 4. Except the noticeable difference now is the fact that, well, it happens like usually in every single candy. Well, the only exception being is the forms of uh, Slogo Candy, Twice Candy, and Thrice Candy, because those uh, can candies can still offer you to able to buy something in the shop. So at least that's a good thing, so... Alright, so it looks like Waluigi's gonna go to the left here. And, uh, exponentially, he might potentially gonna get himself his next star, if possible, so, uh... But, of course, we need to go for that minigame first, so, uh, once again, we're going on to four-player minigames again. And this time we are playing Crank to Rank. And I believe that this minigame does make a comeback in Mario Party The Top 100, which, not exactly sure how though, but anyway. Turn the crank to rise the flag to the top. The flag doesn't rise unless you crank in the correct direction. So you just get out to spin the Wii mode in a, well let's just say a clockwise fashion. And basically, that's all you have to do here, so literally it's just all about motion controls, and then... Well, you just got to be fast enough in order to be able to win this, so... Alright, let's begin. Oh, is it possible I can get a new record? Ah, oh, so close, but I'll take it. And obviously, unlike the Top 100 version, is the fact that you're able to use the stylus on the, uh... The top 100, so rather than just using the, uh, the motion controls in order to able to spin the uh, actual crank around, so I guess that's alright. But then again though, with the forms of the top 100 and superstars, they don't seem to be able to have that much Mario Party 8 minigames to begin with, just because, well obviously this game has a lot of emphasis on motion controls, like I said this earlier, so... Of course, Blooper's gonna still use the cast. Uh, cash zap candy and he's gonna go straight towards me again so what is this he has a vendetta against me or something like that or maybe because I had a lot of coins than everyone else so yeah I do apologize for the actual awkward commentary at this point guys because unfortunately my tongue seems to be a little bit sore today but um, hopefully our muscles will be better at some form or another but obviously today's day is of course the uh, the 3rd of April today, in this case in 2022. So even then I was well classified that for the sake of the actual day it is, so 
Um, no matter what though, I think I might not use the candy yet, because I'm not obviously going to save that up until for later. And of course, I've got my Glorious 10. And the candy I've got is another witchy candy. Seriously, there are a few times that uh, when it comes to bypassing the candy completely, that uh, you can still able to actually get yourselves the most common item of them all though. It is definitely the witchy candy, which as a result, I just wish I was expecting to have something more or better, but it knows what it is. So, I should probably point things out as well, is the fact that with that particular blank space, where, where it has like a random candy effect, that every time you're able to actually get one for free, it's basically it's very similar to like the capsule machine from the likes of Mario Party 5, and especially noticeable with the forms of the orbs uh, space from the likes of, uh, well, to be more specifically, Mario Party 6 and Mario Party 7. So, it, because of that though, except the fact that it's now candy based as opposed to orbs, so. Okay, so it looks like Waluigi got himself his second star now, and the next star is just right over there, so... Not exactly sure if someone else will make it there, or in some cases, if someone managed to land on the Bowser space and try to able to move the star space someplace else, but then again, we'll see what happens there, so... Alright, 1 versus 3, in which minigame we're gonna be playing next? Gun the Runner. Okay. That's, uh, evitable. Well, not so much if, uh, um, well, it's hard to say really, so. One player climbs a tower in 30 seconds while dodging the trip-up shots of the other three players. If you're the climber, stay moving even on an elevator. If you're a shooter, focus firepower near the elevators. So, yeah, basically we need to stop the uh, the one player in a team of one, so that way we can able to actually stun him for a few seconds. So, or generally speaking about the fact that, well, we obviously got to do with a pointing shooting thing, and then obviously in a team of one has to do the 2D side scrolling, so, or 2D platforming whatever in the actual construction site. Actually, gonna think about it. That uh, originally this game was gonna able to technically go to include uh, three extra mini games, but it's been scrapped in the final release of the game. I think it's more likely like ten, uh, like play testing or something, or even in some cases though is the fact that well the actual mini game wasn't exactly finalized. Which uh, I know there are three mini games there are, but um, at least I think if I remember correctly, there are two of them based off from um, four player mini games. And one of them is a dual mini game, which is actually unused. So, but then again, we'll talk more about that in the future. But for now, we've simply managed to swipe it all up when it comes to winning victorious and stuff like that. So, how's that for that? All right. I wonder what turn we're in right now. So we finished turn 12, and uh, I believe we are now on turn number 13. So, yeah, that seems totally obvious for the sake of time. Alright, Blooper, what are you going to do? You're going to use the Bullo Candy in order to able to run over these other players to able to steal coins to someone. So, but the question is though, are you going to get it? Well, obviously you've got a 6, so nope, it doesn't seem you haven't got anyone else, apart from the fact that you land on the red space, so... I guess that might be okay for him, because obviously the red star will come into play, so, yeah, that might be seems obvious, so... Alright, um, no matter what though... Nah, nah, it's not gonna use that anyway, so... Oh, God darn it, I always get low numbers! But that's okay, because I'm still in the lead at the moment, so... Yeah, uh, let me know in the comments below for the question of the day. Uh, what do you think about the forms of, uh, have you guys played Mario Party 8? Because I surely do, like loads of times, as you know. And as a result, though, I think this game is okay. Although it's not the best Hudson Soft Mario Party game out there, mainly because of how the fact that there might be some skepticism when it comes to, like, you know, motion controls and all that stuff. But apart from those side things, though, this game is pretty good. Well, let's just say it's okay. But uh, not the best installment out there. I still think Mario Party 2 is overall the best installment ever. But that's probably just me anyway. 
And also, as you can see, the Bowser now shows up, and, uh, well, it's pretty obvious that he will be able to switch these star spaces around, so... And every once in a while, if someone finishes landing on the Bowser space, it will somehow transform back onto Donkey Kong space, or DK space, so... Yeah, that seems totally obvious. So it looks like there was actually a neck-to-neck -neck between Bodo and Waluigi is gonna race against time to able to actually get that star somehow. Well, if depending on the forms of how good the rolls are, but again, we'll see what happens there. Alright, 2 versus 2 minigame again, and it looks like we are about to be hit on to... Road to Victory. This seems like a cool name for a minigame, but uh, hopefully we need to paddle the boat around. So, let's check out the rules. You and your teammates must row your boat to the island. You each control one area, so coordinate your rolls. And if your, ro if your boat gets stuck, uh, decide who will row your way off it. it off it? Yeah. I'm pretty sure that's what it says. And if you're both uh, row, you might stay stuck. So, yeah, I must admit that I do apologize for the actual, like... Um, some of the actual, um... The actual minigame instructions sometimes, or even the hints for that matter, just managed to able to come off as, like, weird writing, or something like that, but, I don't know, it's probably just me, so we're just gonna have to, like... Well, keep on, like, paddling and all that stuff, though, so, uh... But keep in mind is the fact that uh, if you try to row at the same time, you go straight for it. But if I row the actual boat, I believe it will take us to the left. And I believe that if my teammate Waluigi will row, it will just take me straight to the right. So, yeah, something more like really like a coronation, kind of like cooperating each other or something. So, oh, I suppose another thing I should probably explain about this as well. That, uh, much like in Mario Party 5, at least in Japan anyway, that, uh, the Japanese, uh, um, Mario Party games, well, in terms of the arcade games, oh, jeez, Blooper got very lucky right there. Especially that he almost able to get his next star. Kudos to you, Blooper. Kudos to you. So, yeah, it looks like that uh, both Bodo and Waluigi are not going to get that star anytime soon. Although, they both managed to get two stars. So, at least that's something, so... Yeah, anyway, um... What was I was going to say? Oh yeah, much like in Mario Party 5, back in Japan anyway, they obviously managed to able to get a... Something like a remake of uh, Mario Party 5 arcade games from the likes of in 2004 and 2005 in Japan, but uh, we never got it in the English version because it's all about gambling fest and all that stuff. Although, for what I've heard, it's actually a pretty uh, nice thing to notice. Well, it's kind of hard to say, honestly, because I know it has been uh, quite a few hours since I actually mentioned something like this. But uh, any forms of in Japan, though, for Mario Party 8 also have some arcade games as well. Um, you remember how the forms about the fact that back in Mario Party 5 in Japan, they obviously got two arcade games based off from Mario Party 5, which there are Super Mario Rolling Party of Mystery, and so close to Super Mario Rolling Party of Mystery 2, but now in the forms have been, I think, that the first arcade machine based off from Mario Party 8, in Japan anyway, uh, the game was actually called uh, Mario Party Mysterious Rolling Ch uh, Catcher, and I believe that particular game came out in 2009. And then I believe there's also another one from the likes of in 2012, the same year as when Mario Party 9 came out. And that's what appears to be Mario Party Spinning Carnival. And lastly, in 2013, the same year as when Mario Party Island Tour was released, that's what appears to be Mario Party Mysterious Rolling Catcher 2. So, yeah, that does look pretty interesting, even though those three arcade games in particular are based off from Mario Party 8, so, made by the same developer, so, like, Capcom and stuff, so. Alright, snipe for the picking. Uh, rank up the biggest score by shooting the target zones with the highest numbers. The high school zones aren't always in the middle of the target, so cl pay, uh, close attention. So, yeah, that's all essentially how to think about for this minigame. So you point, and then press A or B to able to shoot. So, 
that's all you really have to do in this mini game. So, in fact, could I think about it though? This mini game does almost reminds me of uh, one of those mini games in Mario Party 6 called uh, Hyper Sniper. Except the biggest difference is now we're not uh, we're no longer using the actual GameCube controller because we have to use the Wii remote throughout the whole entire time. So. Yeah, I guess that makes it pretty obvious by that point, so... Alright, so it's got to focus here, so just in case I don't screw this up. I think the highest amount of points you can get up to in this minigame is like 1500. At least assuming if you're trying to able to be fast enough, or even in this case, you got to be so precise with the actual aiming shots and what have you. Because if you're being too reckless though, then you're probably not going to able to reach into a definition of the high score. But there we go, we somehow still win, regardless of such, but, uh, yeah, I'm still really good when it comes to shooting things, so. Although I could be able to actually use one of my, uh, Wii accessories called the Wii Zapper to make aiming skills a bit easier, but I don't think that might be seems the case, so. Whatever, we'll try to deal with that anyway without it, though, so, uh, anyway, Blooper gets a 6, so. And he gets the, uh... Well, the bit size candy, the best candy of all time, so, because it's pretty obvious, it's very similar to the flower orb from the likes of Mario Party 7, that, uh, you know, only Peach and Daisy can use, so. Uh, five is okay, I mean, I could wish I need to get a bit of a bigger number next time, so. Alright, let's see what's in the items there, so we got the, uh... Well, thrice candy, I might as well buy it. And there was also the Springo candy, when I somehow managed to stall that item from Waluigi. And as a result, though, what that does is the fact that this allows you to able to, like... Well, think of, like, the forms of the warp pipe item from the likes of Mario Party 4 and stuff like that. And um, also the warp block from the likes of uh, Mario Party 2 and Mario Party 3. That, um, oh, and also say applies to, uh, the warp pipe capsule from the likes of Mario Party 5, and a club dough capsule as well. And also the warp pipe orb from the likes of Mario Party 6, not Mario Party 7 though, just because in Mario Party 7 for the warp pipe can be only be used as in a trap orb, as opposed to the likes of how it does it on, uh, yellow colored, um, no, it's actually the green colored, uh, orbs throughout, so... That might be seems obvious. And once again, Blooper's going all the way back to the start again. Jeez, talk about the forms of getting bad luck right there. But oh well. Alright, so meanwhile, Waluigi's definitely gonna use his bit-sized candy by grabbing some more coins. Yeah, I gotta have to admit though, that sprite work on Waluigi does look pretty cool though. Like, it almost kind of reminds me of something almost related to uh, Super Mario Maker. Except the fact that it's almost like entirely in 3D almost. Like, you can almost see the actual, like, almost like a 3D image or something, which... Again, it's kind of hard to say about this, honestly, because uh, there's not much else you can talk about in terms of Mario Party 8 itself. Although, mind you, it's basically it's like a similar game as in 7, except, well, it's on the Wii, so r rather than being on a GameCube, because... Well, you know what I mean, the GameCube's lifespan has already been over since 2006 or something, so... Alright, jump from one spinning platform to the next, in a race to the finish. Watch out for bullet bills, they tend to fly in just when you need to jump. And the minigame is called Sick and Twisted, so... Yeah, basically it's like a typical standard uh, platforming minigame. And that was before when, uh, well, obviously Mario Party 9 has it for Sky Jinx, and also, say, applies to any other minigames in here now as well. I kind of wish that this minigame will make a comeback in, uh, Superstars, but unfortunately, though, it's already too late from now on, because obviously the game has already came out, so... I just realized that, uh, Bodo is already out of the game, because I'm pretty sure Bluebird has somehow managed to step on her, so... And of course, we need to watch our bullet bills, because uh, obviously if we do manage to get hit by those bullet bills, then we will be out of the game. But don't go far behind though, as well, because obviously you also be out. So, and I think that's the easiest way you can get a tie in this mini game, because obviously if you do get a tie, well obviously no one wins, so. Alright. Ah, oh, that was not fair. I hate when things like that happen. It's, it kind of feels like similar to the forms of how it does it on uh, 
uh, the same problem with the forms of Draft Rafts minigame from the likes of Mario Party 6. Well, you can't move further until the camera decides to able to scroll and then... Well, except the fact that in Mario Party 6 in uh, Draft Rafts minigame, that uh, the camera's locked in place. Whilst in here though, even though that was before when Sky Jinx was a thing, that uh, sometimes that the camera doesn't keep up with your movements. So that's sometimes inconsistent, but who knows what it is. I'll take a loss anyway, so... Here we go, folks. Here's the final five turns. That's more like it, because unlike Mario Party 7, that's always going to be the last four turn events for some reason, because I think it's mainly due to the, uh, the Bowser time events and all that stuff. So, in Mario Party 8's version of that particular last five turn event, um, rather than dealing with the forms of the actual, although it still tells you the forms of who's in the lead and who is in last place, no, uh, well, potentially speaking, it's the fact that, well, Usually differently this time around though is the fact that in addition to able to give the fourth player uh, some random gifts and stuff like that, like for instance, I believe MC Ballyhoo, the host in this game, actually decides to give Blooper a candy, which I think it was actually the duo candy, and basically what that candy does is that you can able to actually participate in a duel mini game if you stumble across someone, so even though no, that might be something worth noting for, and especially noticeable, as you can see, coins are everywhere. So yeah, if you thought that new Super Mario Bros. 2 was actually a coin fest uh, kind of game, although, kind of think about it, that uh, Mo new Super Mario Bros. 2 is almost a decade old. Well, until specifically in the summer, so because of that, though, coming up. So, yeah, I can't even believe new Super Mario Bros. 2 is going to be a decade old for the sake of this year. Along with the forms of, uh, well, technically Kingdom Hearts 3D, Dream Drop Distance, already came out for about a decade ago in Japan. So, and I'm sure that's something. Alright, so it's time to use my glorious Springo candy, which I believe I do need to warp somewhere. Almost right near to where Blooper or Bodo was. Not Waluigi though, because he was in an entirely different location. So, there I go. So yeah, um, as you can see, there's a lot of coins all over the place throughout the entire board, meaning about the fact that you can possibly get yourselves a lot of coins from it. Depending on how good your rolls are, then sometimes you can either get either the singular coin on certain uh, blue spaces, as you can see, and some happening spaces, or even especially noticeable with these lucky spaces as well. But there's also some coin banks, which, uh, or coin bags, rather, that uh, it's always located on the forms of the red spaces. So that might be something worth consideration for the sake of the forms of how the fact that you can get a lot of coins so easily in this game. Although, aside from the fact that you can still win coins for certain minigames and certain battle games as well. But most of the time, that's uh, if you really want to boost up your uh, coins by the end of the game, then sure enough, that might be your option. Unless if you get yourselves the thrice candy will be the best option. Or, in some cases, bit size candy as well. So, uh, yeah, that seems all cool and everything. So, anyway. Alright, so I believe we are on 1 versus 3 minigame here, so this time around though, we're first off against with Bodo. So, in this case, we are about to be playing, well, as soon as that particular roll-out thing stops, Jump Rope. Oh man, this is going to be interesting, especially how, well, we just got to keep jumping and hope for the best. So, one player swings a jump rope for 15 seconds, trying to trip up three jumpers. Controlling the rope, change up your swing speed, uh, trying to survive, pay attention to the speed. So basically, one player has to do likely the clockwise uh, spinning around the Wii Remote. Meanwhile, for the other three, needs to able to flick the Wii Remote upwards to jump. So yeah, just like the forms of how it does it on uh, certain mini games, as far as I'm concerned, but uh, we haven't come across into that yet. So. Anyway, so let's begin. Jump! Oh, goodness gracious, that was a close one. Wow, Blooper was already out. And Waluigi's already out, but I'm the only one who survives so far. Oh, God! Okay. Whew. For the life of me, whenever I match the first time I played a game, or specifically this minigame itself, I can never seem to able to win this minigame somehow sometimes, mainly due to the fact that you have to be like 
kind of unpredictable when it comes to likely of never know of uh, if the actual uh, the rope will somehow sometimes can either go slow or fast or even in some cases it will attempt to trip you up at points but it knows what it is so Alright, so it looks like Blooper is gonna use his uh, duo candy right there. And sure enough, if you're able to duel against someone, is he gonna duel against with uh, Bodo? Or me? Well, we'll see what happens there. And sure enough, if you're able to duel against with Bodo. Oh, and another thing is worth mentioning for this point as well on uh, certain candy items, if you do have the special effects, as you can see, that Blooper was actually in flames. Um, obviously you can't get free candy because obviously it's all disappeared and everything unless you go back to normal, so... Alright, first dual mini, dual mini game in Mario Party 8 and it looks like they are playing back to Sugar Rush. So, yeah, we haven't got a new mini game yet, but somehow we're going back in there. But except we have to watch the computer players during the match, so... Yeah, it's basically it's like the 2 versus 2 mini game except... Rather than having four players around, we now have to deal with the forms of two players duel against each other. So, whoever's going to win this? But I can tell you that Blue uh, Bodo is actually going to get slightly faster. I don't know who's going to get this though. Oh, Bodo get it. Okay. Oh, it's just a uh, that chocolate cake again. And, well, Bodo wins. Because I'm pretty sure that Blooper might be a little bit lacking throughout, so... I guess that's sure it's something. And what's nice for Bodo, as you can see on screen, that she always wears her ring every time whenever we uh, play those specific Mario Party games, including forms of in Mario Party 7, and especially those for with Mario Party 9, and especially those for with Superstars. So, yeah, that's sure it's definitely something. And of course, that much like the forms of how it does it on a similar system, as in Mario Party 7, that if you manage to able to win a dual minigame, chances are though that you're gonna have to able to wager. Well, luckily though, it's nowhere near as luck based as the forms of how it does it in Mario Party 7 for the actual dueling system. Because basically in Mario Party 7, once you win a minigame, that's um, it's all about luck, and especially noticeable that chance time is no longer there between 7 and 8 before they bring it back in the forms of superstars. So basically, in uh, for example, if I somehow manage to win uh, the minigame in Mario Party 7 in a dual minigame, like my favorite minigame of all time in Mario Party 7 is Camp Yukiki, and basically if I somehow win, I have to predetermine by luck by able to hit that specific surprise dice block, and then basically, if the symbol actually says 10 coins or 2 stars for that matter, I can at least manage to able to win something, and especially noticeable about the fact that, well, generally speaking, it's just the fact that it's all about random and luck. Whilst in here this time around, though, it kind of feels a bit similar, except it's now skill-based, rather than just all about luck this time around, thank god. So in this case, though, you have to do with the actual dart thing that you always have to wear your wish, uh, wrist strap, by the way, if you manage to get involved playing on it, because you know how with, uh, most any other Wii games every now and then always rely on the forms of the warning screens every time whenever you're able to actually just to go ahead and play certain stuff throughout. And uh, basically that's, uh, well, you just don't want to hit the TV and don't want to hit anyone else. So I suppose another thing I should probably explain about this as well, much like in Mario Party 7, uh, Maxi Maxi 10 just refuses to do this Let's Play, which I have absolutely have no idea that he just skips that let's play entirely, although he's probably gone for his existence, so... But I digress, enough about that nitpicking thing out of the way. And, uh, it looks like the next star is gonna be back right next to the Forbes of the Piranha Plant spot. And, I think, Bodo might able to actually decide able to blast off into certain barrel cannons. Oh yeah, let's get to the forms of the next uh, point of view when it comes to the forms of... Oh, wait a second. Oh my god, it looks like Bodo's gonna get her next star. Oh jeez, she got very lucky right there. Especially noticeable, she actually got two stars in one turn. Thanks to the forms of a bit of a good rolls, first of all. And second, that she managed to got very lucky with that particular DK barrel cannon section. So, who knows to you? So anyway, um, 
Yeah, with the forms of, uh, depending on what specific, uh, modes you play, although, basically, that, uh, in party mode in, uh, DK's Treetop Temple, it's pretty simple by the rules of it, though. That is basically, it's like the only, uh, traditional style of gameplay we all know and love. Well, if you ever play the forms of the Star Battle Arena mode, or in a dual battle anyway, you do have a different objective. Like, for instance, that, uh, in this board in particular, in order to able to win a board, you have to collect two stars, and then basically, if you grab two stars, then that's the end of the game. So it's kind of similar to the forms of in the solo cruise for Mario Party 7, that in Grand Canal, that uh, you have to win two stars in order to able to finish the match. So at least that's something you're worth able to classify for realizing in this. And then there are some other boards that uh, usually utilize uh, coin farming, but I'll get some more that and doing at some point in the next few weekends. So here we go, on to the next mini game, which is paint misbehaving. So work with your teammates to paint more Goombas, your team color than your rivals. It's not over until it's over. Keep on shooting paint until the bitter end. So, yes, yeah, so you have to use the directional pad and press the 2 button to able to shoot the paint balls. So, yeah, that's all I have to do here. And I believe that, uh, fundamentally speaking, this minigame will make a return from the likes of Mario Party Superstars. So, because obviously with the Superstars game, has no longer usage of motion controls, unlike in Super Mario Party, it does have a lot of emphasis on motion controls because of Joy-Con controllers. So, yeah, that makes it totally obvious of why this minigame makes a comeback in uh, Superstars, which I'm honestly fine with, except it might actually be kind of short, but also that uh, I kind of wish that they'll have, like, uh, uh, King of the Thrill in um, Superstars, but uh, it's already too late, so... And I believe this minigame also has the dual variation in there as well, so uh, I guess that's something worth uh, mentioning for that specific stuff. So it looks like we've won by exactly 11 points, so kudos to you, Waluigi, for able to help me out. So it's time to take down those baddies. Well, not really baddies in this game, because obviously they'll become playable. Although I should probably point things out, I remember back in the day that I've managed to unlock uh, Blooper first, but then until at some point in the later years throughout the, my life, I somehow managed to able to got Hammer Bro instead of Blooper first. So I'm guessing that makes it a little bit obvious for that specific worth, points worth knowing for. But uh, anyway. So we're now on to the last three turns already, so uh, things get a little bit more relative at this point, so... Alright, you better not give me a low numbers game. Okay, come on. Uh, let me see. I need about 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. I need 7 or higher, not able to reach here, so... Why have I get this though? Ah, oh, son of a biscuit! Ah, oh, god, I hate getting low numbers. Although it's all about luck, as to be expected. Oh well, we'll just have to live with that anyway. And it looks like Bodo's gonna able to almost caught up. And, well, she's probably gonna... Oh, she's not gonna buy anything yet. And I believe there's also another happening space over there, uh, where Bodo was almost right near to. Uh, what the happening space can do is the fact that you can able to have ourselves a nice little water slide down to in the bottom. And then basically you can also get coins with it too, so that seems pretty cool. I should probably point things out as well, that depending on what boards we go into, they obviously manage to got some different amount of, uh, space shapes. Like, for instance, on the first board, it's almost like a cuboid. Uh, 3D space shape or something like that. Although in a later board style, we'll talk more about that in the future. So for now, we are playing the shake it up. So this means we must able to shake our soda can. So shake your can of soda pop. After five seconds, everyone will open their cans, make your can spew highest. And then don't get too crazy when shaking your can. Small, fast shakes do the trick better than the big ones. So basically you just have to waggle the Wii modes up and down, and then that's all you have to do. So yeah, that's literally how this minigame plays out. 
And I think this is one of the first few mini games I actually really looking forward to playing it back in the day. Oh my goodness. Oh, I don't know if I actually did the best run, but we'll just go for a smallest butte. But oh well, no big dealio. Especially I still managed to win, anywho. And I believe this minigame also makes its debut on the dual minigames as well, so uh... Actually, talking of which, when it comes to certain dual minigames, uh, with those repeated minigames as we saw, from the likes of uh, Sugar Rush, or uh, Sh Shake It Up, or in some minigames throughout like, uh, Paint Misbehaving, I won't classify for counting these personally, because they're literally the exact same minigames as new forms of how it does it on... Excuse me. As new forms of how it does it on the free for all four player minigames department, because it plays out exactly the same thing, except with less players and more players, respectively. So, it kind of does the same thing from the likes of uh, Mario Party DS as well, and especially noticeable in some cases, in the majority of them, from the likes of Mario Party 9, Island Tour 10, and I think that's about it. So,. Although, in Star Rush and onwards, though, they obviously managed to be able to bring back the actual four-player game match, as opposed to, like, well, two- or three-player match, even, but even then, though, it knows what it is. Alright, so it looks like Bodo's gonna use her, um, twice candy, so that she might be able to get her opportunity that, no, she doesn't get a double force, so... But regardless, she will still get some more coins from the likes of the coin bag and stuff like that, so... At least she managed to able to got quite a few coins there. Alright, Waluigi, what are you gonna do? You gonna use your bit-sized candy, and I'm presuming you want to be able to rank up more coins, aren't you? And let's see what number you get. You get a 9. Seems like a good number to have. Especially with uh, 27 coins combined, so at least I did my math calculations correct, so that's sure it's something. I'm pretty sure that me and Waluigi are almost getting close to each other with those coin amounts. Although, mind you, much like in Mario Party 6 and Mario Party 7, that the coin star is no longer present, so we're pretty much used to that at this point. Alright, back to full play minigames again, and it looks like we are playing Punch a Bunch again. Thankfully, we did not play the uh, the worst minigame ever for the likes of Mario Party 8. That who probably knows with that particular Yukiki's uh, shown up on that one of those minigames that involves around, you know, turning the Wii Mouse left or right in order to change directions, which I'm sure that most people already know what I'm going to talk about, because obviously I'm not looking forward to able to play that minigame, so... But anyway, let's do some massive punches there, like we already did there, and we can go across the bridge again. Another thing it's worth noting for is the fact that, much like in Mario Party 7, that uh, it does have some new animations for certain minigame victories and certain accomplishments on certain things throughout, I just realized. Because even then though, that even though it wasn't until in, uh, well, generally in Mario Party 9 and uh, Island Tour 10 and Star Rush slash the Top 100, and um, also uh, Super Mario Party, and especially noticeable with uh, other titles as well, they obviously got some really, really uh, fascinating new animations for certain mi uh, uh, minigame victories and stuff, so... And it looks like Blooper's got screwed, because in addition to able to missing out on that particular star, but also that uh, he doesn't get a standard chance and all that stuff, so even though it's kind of hard to, it's hard to say, honestly. So, um, and of course, much like the Forms of Power does it on, uh, any other Mario Party games is the fact that when it's the last turn, that, uh, basically certain shops will be closed, and especially noticeable how the fact that the actual candy space kind of seg segment, uh, basically you can't get those candies for free now, because obviously this is the final turn already, so... Anyways, 4, 10, and a 5, meaning 19, so... That seems like a good number to have. And that will pretty much lead me to the fourth star in the line. So, I believe me and Bodo actually got the exact same amount of stars right now. So, 
Although, whatever we get into the actual results on it, though, that's, um, I'll get into more details about that whenever we finish up with the very first board in Mario Party 8. So, speaking of the next star, it's gonna be, well, right next to the Bowser space, in addition to the blue space as well. I don't think I can able to actually make it there, just because I was expecting to able to get the highest roll, but it turns out I don't think I did. So, oh well, no big deal. Who knows what it is. Especially noticeable for that prediction of the actual bonus stars coming up, so... Uh, I think no matter what though, I think I should probably land on the happening space, because, well, usually the green star decides to come into play, so as a result though, I feel like trying to do that, so... There goes me, just getting chased by those Yukikis with barrels onto them. And sure enough, that it'll force me to go to the other side. But that's okay for me, because obviously with the green star comes into play, I'm not exactly sure of how many uh, green spaces or happening spaces that some uh, players attempt to land on, but then again, we'll find out in the actual detailed results by the end of the board, so... Oh, talking of the devil, we have Bowser again, and sure enough, he'll be able to teleport the actual star, or in some cases, he'll get rid of the star and then move it to someplace else. I gotta say, the Bowser's theme in this game is actually pretty epic in their own right, with the actual music theme and everything. Because even then though, it does feel as long, almost like too serious or something. Or maybe it's just me. Alright, last turn for you, Waluigi, in uh, DK's Treetop Temple, and you've got a 6 at the end. So, in what space do you land on? Just the blue space. And I'm pretty sure we might be able to come across into either 2 versus 2 or 1 versus 3. And in some cases, we have another 1 versus 3 minigame. So, and this time we are playing, let's just say, a new minigame or something like that because, well, it seems pretty obvious. Crash and Crash. Okay, so this seems promising, I'm assuming so. So, three players try to survive a booby-trapped skateboard course. The solo players shoot traps to activate them. Uh, looking for booby traps? Watch your cursor's color on the run. Teamwork tip, stay separated. So, yeah, basically it's the fact that we need to obviously separate it into each other. But in just in case you, we don't get crashed into each other with all these little booby traps and stuff like that. Some booby traps can be involved around, uh... Well, let's just say, warm scan your way, or especially noticeable with some of these other, like, rolling obstacles that you have to avoid, and especially noticeable with these little, uh, empty cans and stuff like that. And even the pipes that activates the bullet bills, which also we need to avoid those, so... Yeah, with the, uh, the team of three, all we have to do, we have to tilt the Wii modes in the corresponding direction to obviously move yourself with the actual skateboarding and stuff like that. Although, the team of one needs to be able to shoot those specific, activating those specific stuff, so, although, in some cases, Blooper somehow screwed up, but luckily for me and Waluigi, of all things, somehow still survives. Nicely done. And in some cases, though, it's the fact that, uh, Birdo just managed to able to, didn't get her chances to able to win, somehow, so... There we go, that pretty much wraps it up for the first board in Mario Party 8. So you know what that means, it's time for the results. In this case, the final results. Now, unlike the other games, that it does manage to able to tell you how many stars and how much coins you collected throughout the whole board. Well, apparently, uh, MC Ballyhoo doesn't do that this time around, which I guess is a bit of a problematic. Although, we already know what the actual details are, so even then I've got the most stars, and especially no spoil, I've got most coins, even though me and Bodo were tied for stars at the moment, so... Anyway, it's time for bonus stars. So the first bonus star is minigame star, whoever wins the most minigames and gets some coins with it wins. So of course, battle minigames do count, much like the forms of how it does it in 5, 6, and 7, so that might be sure it's something, so... Alright, next we have Running Star, and somehow it goes to me. Okay, that's uh, pretty cool. Pretty cool, though. And of course, much like in My Party 7, though, like I said, is that some of these uh, bonus stars are pretty much random, depending on what boards you go to. So, it always chooses free, though, so I guess that's fair. 
and the shopping store, I managed to get it. It's a good thing I did manage to get it anyway, because the majority of the items I spent is of course thrice candy, so I'm able to catch up with the forms of not only the running star, but also just trying to get the stars with it as well. So the winner on the first board in Mario Party 8 is none other than me. And it's a good thing too, since I did manage to use, you know, thrice candy so many times throughout. So congratulations, Toad. Yep, you are my uh, trusty old buddy. Especially those boys, it's kind of a shame that you're no longer playable in uh, the top 100 and super and uh, superstars. So, oh well, it knows what it is when it comes to like playable debuts, I suppose. So of course, like always, you can still double check on the forms of the detail results here and there. Like for instance, I've got 241 coins for the mini games. I could have actually like, um, yeah, I just managed to able to got uh, 60 coins uh, worth of purchase on the shopping star. I think Blooper might be able to get the candy star if the candy star comes into play. And I'm pretty sure, oh dang, me and Waluigi you are pretty close with the running star. Like usually eight above. Jeez, that seems pretty close. And it looks like Blooper might get a chance to able to have the red star if the red star comes into play. And I could have got the green star if that serves to be the case. So, and of course, Bodo, she's the only one lands on the lucky space. And you know what I mean with DK and Bowser spaces. So, no graph on it this time around though, which is kind of sucks if you ask me. So, anyways, we've got the ending off here. So join me next weekend for more of Let's Play of Mario Party 8 is that we are moving on to the second board, known as Goomba's Booty Boardwalk. So I'll see you guys next weekend. Later, fellas.